Was it a good year or a bad year for Major League Fishing in the Bass Pro Tour in 2024? That's what we're going to talk about right now. If you like this kind of content, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and thank you. Thank you to all the new subscribers, all the people who are commenting, all the people who are being interactive on the channel. I sincerely appreciate it. I mean, I can't even tell you enough. It is, it's overwhelming, it's humbling, and it's its just fantastic. I really enjoy all of y'all. So, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But if you're not a subscriber, hit that like and subscribe button and become part of the team and family. 2024 started off slightly on a rocky note for Major League Fishing. Again, they came back with lots of changes and some drastic changes. At first, it was all about we were only going to see 50 anglers for 2025. Luckily, they pushed that back so that there'll only be 50 anglers for 2026. And those middle-of-the-pack anglers had to really take into consideration what they were going to do or how they were going to fish. And there were a lot of unhappy professional anglers on the MLF BPT. And instead of trying to requalify and become part of that top 65, a lot of anglers left. A lot of anglers like Tommy Biffle and Josh Butler, Mitch Crane, Roy Hawk, Brett Height, Timmy Horton, Jeff Crete, Russ Lane, Jordan Lee left. Cody Meyer, Cliff Pace, Randall Tharp, and Dakota Ebear. And those anglers left because either they were unhappy or they didn't think they would requalify. But I think a lot of them left because over the years there's been constant changes. And I think you just get to a point where you're as confused as the fans. And we found out that we weren't going to see Group A or Group B, Day 1, be streaming online at all. And that upset fans. And we also saw some of the anglers upset about it too. But it did give the anglers an opportunity to stream it themselves on their own platform on YouTube. And that was really pretty cool. We found out that they had a great tournament schedule for 2024. Now there were some new places that they were going to go to and some older places that they were going to go to. But overall, the schedule was really good for the anglers. And for the fans, it would be exceptional because we saw lots of fish caught. We had a couple tournaments where it was absolutely absurd on how many fish were caught and how many thousands of pounds of fish were caught and released exactly in the same place. It was also the first time in I don't even know how many years that we wouldn't see Kevin Van Dam, the GOAT, professionally fishing. Even though he went to the heavy hitters and he did go to Red Crest, it was a little weird on the first tournament to not see the man we've all grown up admired and is the greatest of all time and while they caught tons of fish most of them were caught using forward facing sonar something that has been the hottest topic of all time and a lot of fans don't like it but as the season went on i believe major league fishing did the right thing and started to have the cameraman and other people interact and it became more interaction between that the the angler and the fan or the cameraman and it made it slightly better as the tournaments went through the first tournament stage one was on toledo bend dustin Connell won and it was a fantastic tournament stage two santi cooper jacob wheeler took home the win the red crest championship was right after that and dustin Connell won again for his second championship in a row and it was his second tournament win of the season stage three was at dale hollow probably the place i really wanted to see the most in april and there was wheeler again at that point in time i think most people were going is dustin and wheeler gonna win every tournament in 2024 because it was going back and forth and those guys roomed together and seemed to be on fire together too this was about the time that we heard the news of James Watson being suspended and kicked out of Major League Fishing in the Bass Pro Tour. And there were loads of people upset. And James was very vocal, and rightfully so. And he gave his opinions, rightfully so, about what he thought and how he felt. But at that point in time, he got the boot. One of the things I did at the beginning of the year is I thought I'd do a tournament recap and also go over who I thought was in and out. And it was one of the more fun videos to do, even though it took a lot of my time. But knowing what who I thought was in and who I thought was out, I thought was good content for you and I thought it was good content for me because I wanted to know. 
Stage four was on Lake Eufaula. Finally, we saw someone else. Zach Burge won that event, and it was another great tournament and couldn't have been happier for Zach. Heavy Hitters was on Kissimmee, and I think without question, the Heavy Hitters was one of the best tournaments I've ever watched overall. Jordan throwing a frog in that matted grass and watching the explosions was as good as it gets for a fan interaction and a fan watching process. And I couldn't have been happier that Jordan won. Stage five was on the Chowan River and that was won by Drew Gill. I think the story that was a story within the story, that was when Zach Burge jumped out and made his way into that area. And we thought that he was disqual his weight was disqualified, but then they came back and made it right and he ended up getting in seventh place. Stage six was on the uh, James River and we got to see a man that deserved the win and that was Skeet Reese. Not only did he get inducted to the Hall of Fame this year, Hall of Fame of Fishing, but that win actually helped propel him and get him enough points to make sure that he requalified for the 2025 season and it was his birthday weekend. So it was absolutely fabulous. And then stage seven, this last one, we had the, my man, Michael Neal win the event and we got to see Jacob Wheeler win another Angler of the Year title. He's won three out of six years on the BPT. Some of the highlights are some of the things that happened during the year. We got to see Josh Weaver pull himself out of the invitationals to try to allow an angler pull himself and go into the BPT and that move was, I thought it was amazing. I think there's there's a lot of good people in fishing but Josh proved to be one of the best and his his integrity and everything about him is just fabulous for doing that for another angler and in the process we got to hear about a new team trail and what's going to happen here in the next few days over the next week or so and we heard a lot of things that went the in and outs of major league fishing the bass pro tour and of course there's going to be things that are negative and there's going to be a lot of things that are positive but I kind of felt like this was a really good year for Major League Fishing. I enjoyed all the tournaments. I thought that they did great. I thought that, of course, there's got to be something done about forward-facing sonar. And I think in this off-season of 2025, we're going to see some sort of change with forward-facing sonar. And we also know that the 65 anglers are now going to go down to 50. And that group is going to be a condensed group of the elite, elite anglers for BPT. And I think that is the right decision to go. I also know in 2024, whoever wins the tournament is going to make $150,000. And it's about time that the tournaments start increasing the payouts, especially for first place. Because it's been 20 plus years that that payout of $100,000 has stayed the same. And that's great that the BPT is doing that. Hopefully other leagues will join and, and try to find some money to give these guys a little bit more money for the winners and the other anglers going down. Now, what did you think? I think my story of the year was James Watson. I know he'll hate that I say that. I, I'm sorry, James. But I think when you look back at all of the things that happened in 2024, the Watson kicked out and how it happened and the fines and all the things that came about with James being booted out, I think that was the biggest story. I don't know if it's as big as a story now, but I think that it took over a lot of social media and a lot of podcasts. But what do you think? What was your overall feel of the 2024 season for the Bass Pro Tour? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? What was your biggest story for 2024? That's what I want to know. So comment below and tell me what you think. Thanks for watching. Thanks for everything. Thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button. I really do appreciate it. There's a gnat in here. It's making me go crazy. I appreciate all you. Make sure you take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. I'll talk to you very, very soon. Thank you and cheers.